In this video, we will have a look at the event bus. Event bus will allow a seamless communication between components by dispatching and listening to the events. First of all, what we need to do is create a new directory for these files because these won't be components actually. So under the source directory, if we create a new one, call it core, for instance, you can call it obviously whatever else you'd like. Under this core directory, I'm going to create new JavaScript file called event bus. And what I'm going to start here with is going to be export default class event bus. And this event bus will have a constructor, which will set the property this bus property to new view instance. We will also have two methods. One will be to fire the event. So fire, it will take event because I will allow an array of events. And then we're going to use rest parameter to allow represent an indefinite number of arguments. So you can pass as many arguments as you want. So three full stops and we call it data. So that's our fire event. And for the listener, we are going to have a listen method. And again, it's going to allow multiple events at a time. So events and this one will take a callback. So what we want to do when this event happens. Let's first start with the fire. And here we are going to first check if the events argument is of the array type. So if, and we're actually going to check against it. So isn't array is array. So we're using global array object and we're checking is array and we pass events as argument. And if it isn't, we're simply going to use this bus. And because it's a view instance, we have access to the emit method. And we can dispatch it with the event and then the data. And here I've used spread syntax to allow a terrible expression to expand into multiple arguments. So what we took here, we then expand into separate arguments. Okay, so that's what we do when the arg the first argument, the events, is an array. But what happens when it is an array? Then we are going to simply use for loop with constant first one as index in events. So this index will give us numerical index of the given event we are currently looping through. And here we're going to do the exactly the same thing. This bus uh, emit only this time we are going to use events and then the event by its index So index. And again, we're going to use the spread of data to pass through as a second argument to this emit method. Now, one last thing, obviously, within this is array statement, we need to hit return so that this statement doesn't go any further. Obviously, once it's an array, just call this. Otherwise, you call this for loop. Now for the listen method, we're just going to copy everything and we're going to replace emit with on because we listen to the given event. And as a data, data will be replaced with the callback. Now, as you can see, we have a lot of duplication. This statement here, this conditional statement, then this uh, for loop. Uh, perhaps we could extract this whole logic into a separate method and then just call it from within each of these methods separately. Okay, so I'm going to create a new method called wrapper. And this method will take events, then if not array and otherwise. So I will I will now copy one of these statements, paste it in side of this wrapper. And then if it's not array, call if not array. Otherwise, we are going to call this otherwise callback. So otherwise, and we pass index through as an argument. Now let's use this wrapper within the fire and listen methods. So we're going to go for this wrapper and we pass events as first argument. Then we are passing a callback to this. Actually, let's just copy what we have here. So we have this first one is for if not array. So if it's not array, we're going to call this one, we can remove this block, let's put semicolon here. Otherwise, we are going to call it with the index pass through as an argument. And this time we're going to call this second statement with the event called by its index, and we can remove this follow up from here as well. Now I'm going to copy this entire statement, 
paste it inside of the listen method. Now emit is going to be changed with on and data will be changed to callback. So callback, there we go. And that's our event bus completed. And now what we need to do is to register it within the bootstrap. We are going to start with import event bus from current directory source core and then we have this event bus and now we are going to go for window event bus equals new event bus we don't need this brackets at the end and now we can call this event bus globally to access fire and listen method. If you'd like to find out more about the event type of the instance methods, you can find this information on viewjs.org under instance methods events. You'll find the on and emit as well as once and off.